My name is Karen Narasaki, and I'm a commissioner on the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. I wanted to become a lawyer uh, because I had become very active in college in uh, social change efforts, uh, both in terms of gender discrimination as well as the very early stages of the Asian American movement. Uh, I actually debated going into business or to law school. Uh, no one in my family had gone to law school. My family didn't know anyone who was a lawyer. And my father actually was discouraging me because he wanted to see me become an engineer or an accountant because he felt if you worked with numbers, you were either right or wrong, and it was harder to discriminate against you. And he was worried that since I was Asian and a woman, that it might be harder for me to succeed in a field like law. Well, my family history actually has a lot to do with my becoming a lawyer. Uh, my parents were both interned during World War II because they were Japanese Americans, even though uh, both of them had been born in the U.S., and in my dad's case, his mother had actually been born in the U.S. as well. Uh, and I grew up uh, without my parents actually talking about it until I hit high school and we had a special social studies segment on the internment, and I came home because I was just so shocked that something like that could have happened. And I confronted my parents about whether it was true, whether they knew anything about it, and um, got a very explosive reaction from them because they had really kind of tried to suppress those stories. And I remember asking my father, how could this have happened? And he said, we didn't have people who could speak out for us at the time, and we didn't really know how to speak out ourselves. And that led me to believe that if there had been more Japanese American lawyers, there, there were a handful at the time, some of whom ended up challenging uh, the order all the way to the Supreme Court. But I remember thinking that, you know, as a community, we needed to have more people who could stand up and who understood how the system worked. I find that the internment stories of my parents and that whole period is uh, echoes right now in the current climate. Uh, obviously, the current climate is born out of the tragedy of the terrorist attacks on 9-11. Uh, and even then, the issue of the internment came up. In fact, the World Trade Center was bombed before 9-11 in a, a smaller uh, bomb. And Norman Mineta was then in Congress. And I remember him telling me uh, to help engage the Muslim and Arab American community to have them come talk to him because he was very worried about what might be happening to them. Uh, and in fact, uh, it's not that well known, but there were actually plans uh, that had begun to be drawn up about what they would do about Muslims and then 9-11 happened. And uh, I remember thinking that um, I, I was very sad when it came out that it was Arab American and Muslims because I had dreaded December 7th when I was growing up uh, because that was the day that uh, the anniversary of the Pearl Harbor bombing and I kept thinking oh my god you know this community is now going to be experiencing that every year uh, for the rest you know for the foreseeable future right uh, and now we're here and the question is being put how far, again, how far can the government go? I feel good about the fact that a lot of the efforts around the redress movement and the successful passage of the legislation that included a fund to create educational materials has helped more Americans to be aware that the internment happened and to understand why it was wrong. So we all understand that uh, sending citizens, American citizens, into detention camps without trial uh, is wrong. But where the line is for immigrants who are not citizens is yet unclear. And Korematsu still, unfortunately, stands as a potentially usable precedent. The irony is that the current travel ban, the current Muslim ban, uh, opens up the opportunity for the court to reconsider Korematsu. And the question is whether they will affirm it or whether they will take the opportunity to strike it.
I've always felt that attorneys have a particularly important role in democracy uh, because we are the keepers of the rule of law uh, and we also are the translators and the bridge between our communities and the people who actually make policy and make decisions, whether it's the courts or legislators or city council people. Uh, and I've always felt that part of my role as an attorney is to help uh, people in our community tell their stories. Uh, I really very much believe in the American people. I think most people are good people, uh, but they don't necessarily know each other's stories. And if they hear them, then they can perhaps understand what it means to be fair and just uh, and uh, be more concerned about the rights of everyone in their community. I got in Napaba near the very beginning. I was not one of the founders, but I was very engaged in the Asian Bar Association of Washington uh, and uh, thought it was very important. It was about Asian American attorneys coming together also to serve the community, which was an underserved community legally. Uh, and so when Napaba was formed, uh, I was very eager to attend the first conference. It was very exciting to see so many attorneys come together who wanted to see how the law could advance uh, the goals of the community. And that's what brought me there. I ended up on the board uh, and uh, have continued to be active in Napaba because I believe it's a very important voice for the community. I think lawyers are almost by definition agents of social change uh, because we are the keepers of the rule of law. The challenge though is the laws that exist uh, need to evolve uh, with the way society is evolving. Uh, and also sometimes the laws that exist are not fair and not just. And lawyers are in a position to recognize that and are in the best position to figure out how to fix that problem. I've been very fortunate. I've had a lot of great moments. I think the fact that I'm the daughter of uh, parents who were interned during World War II, and yet I've had the opportunity to meet with presidents in the White House and talk about civil rights is quite an amazing testament to the kind of country that we're in, that in one generation that could happen. So what has engaged me about work in DC is the work can take many years. It took us 12 years to expand the Hate Crimes Act to cover LGBTQ people and people with disabilities. But when you achieve it, it impacts so many people's lives. And uh, I've really been privileged to be able to be part of that effort.